Today's how-to will be all about light effects and how to make them in Photoshop. These tips won't be on lighting and shading as a whole. Instead, we'll be focusing just on some special effects that involve lighting. To start with, we'll be making a solid light beam. The way to fake a ray of light from the sun is actually pretty straightforward. All you need to do to make a solid beam of light is use your brush or fill a selection where you want the bulk of that light to be. From there, I typically duplicate the layer though I made and then tend to blur the duplicate layers to different degrees and blend them into each other. Uh, for my instance I used a soft round brush filled with white and painted a straight line with it. With that made I copied the layer and I applied a Gaussian blur to it. I made a few of these copies shrinking the layer in size each time and blurring them slightly less. That gave me a nice beam effect. For a different example, as you would see in sci-fi scenes, I decided I would also use this exact same scene and create a different kind of light. I gave the scene a laser impacting with the water. To do this, as I explained in my fundamentals episode on layers a few weeks back, the inner glow layer style could do what I was looking for here. To apply this, double click on your combined layer or go to the FX icon on the bottom of your layers panel to get to the inner glow style. From there, you adjust the color, size, softness of the edge, and blending mode of the glow, and you can give your beam more color and then it's just a matter of adding more touches to your scene. For some last touches to this scene, I then gave it some boiling water, some steam, an impact zone, and some color grading to finish things up. And that was beams of light. The next effect I'm going over is giving your subject an aura, halo, or other field of light around them. To do this, first you select your entire subject, with the pen, marquee, and or lasso tools depending on your preference. Once you've selected the whole subject, there are a couple ways of going about it. On a new layer, the first way to do it would be as easy as inverting your selection with Command I on a Mac or Control I on a PC and just brushing around your subject, which then won't be affected. From there, you can blur and it will have a hard edge where the selection stops. Or if you want the glow to overlap your subject, just deselect with Command or Control D first before blurring. Alternatively, with your selection still on the subject, you can go into the Modify submenu under the Select menu at the top of Photoshop and choose Border. This will take the area you've selected and we'll make a new selection going on the inside and outside edge of that selection as far as the number of pixels that you set. That done, you can fill the new selection with color and do the same blurring as before with or without an active selection. This will also give your character the aura effect. Lastly, you can duplicate the selection to its own layer with Command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC. From there, you could just apply another inner glow as well as an outer glow as previously covered. This has a few advantages over the other methods, including that it will change and move with your layer and you have control over the blur while being able to easily change that blur at a later time. That said, it will affect the entire layer, so if you only want to give glows to certain parts of your subject, the other options would probably be the way to go. Lastly, I'll be going over neon effects, which I've covered in one of my earlier videos, which I've linked to in a card, but I'll also talk about in this video. These can be applied to text or to paths made with the pen tool. The first step for this effect is to use the pen tool to build the path you want your lights to follow or to place your text. Once you have the path made, right click and choose to stroke the path. In the new dialog box that opens, you'll have a number of options for tools to choose from, from the brush and eraser to the dodge and burn or blur and sharpen tools. No matter what tool you select, it'll use the brush preset, size, and customizations of that tool if you've set them. For example, if you've got your brush set to a scatter brush, that scattered pattern will apply along your path. You can also choose to simulate pressure, which will randomize how it applies as though you were using a tablet. Whatever the case, click OK and you'll have your line for the neon. From there, it'll be the same for text as it is for these lines you've made. We go into the layer styles and apply inner and outer glows, 
changing up the size and color. If you're working on something like a sign and you want to give it some weight as though it were hanging off of a wall, you can also apply a diffused colored drop shadow and or inner shadow. And that was the light special effects in Photoshop. Hope everyone's enjoyed. You can give me your thoughts in the comments below, like the video, or subscribe to my channel for updates when I release awesome content every Friday. Have a great day, everyone.